All right, welcome back to the channel, KMR Rotary. We're gonna talk some brap, and I just wanna thank everybody for watching, liking, subscribing, and if you haven't, please do. It really helps us out. Launching a new website, we've got products, we've got services, just let me know what you'd like to hear talked about and what I can do to help you with your rotary engine. So a question I get quite often is, uh, we're gonna cover it, is what oil viscosity do I recommend or do I run in my race cars? And I think this is a little bit of a touchy subject. Everybody's got opinions. So I'm gonna start off by saying, hey, I know drag racers run some really high viscosities, um, you know, low temperatures, high temperatures, depending on where you're living. Uh, manufacturers are recommending really low viscosities these days. Um, and even in like the road race world or in the, um, the land speed world, some people will run really low oil pressures or really low viscosities to get as much horsepower out of the motor as possible, disregarding reliability and bearing life. So I know all that's going on out there. This is just my personal opinion based off my experience. So please don't hate me for it. All right, let's jump into it. Oil viscosity and what I run in my rotary engine. So for the past 20 years, basically almost my entire rotary life, I've been doing it a little longer, but building engines roughly, I think 21 years, 22 years, I'll have to check that, but in that range, um, I've always ran 20 weight 50 viscosity oil. I've ran tons of different brands through my career of racing, through building engines, but one thing that I can say I see when I take apart engines is engines that have proper maintenance and are running higher viscosity around a 20 weight 50 seem to have better bearing life and better internal conditions provided they haven't been absolutely destroyed when they come apart. Now, there's a lot of things going on here. So when we, we look at like the modern RX-8, or we just talk about like your daily driver rotary cars, manufacturers know what they're doing. So if you're daily driving and you're happy with your oil, hey, stay with it, regular oil changes. Um, always remember that oil is exceptionally important in rotary engines because they've got a couple things going on that are unique. One is rotary engines are both oil cooled and water cooled. So the water is taking care of the block cooling while the oil is actually being injected up into the rotor from the eccentric shaft to cool the rotor as that thing is heat soaking inside the engine. So that oil is taking care of keeping those apex seal springs, corner seal springs, and that, that rotor, cast iron rotor temperature down um, as where the water is keeping the block temperature down. So in a lot of cases, people will ask me, hey, my, my rotary engine's running hot and I don't know why. And, one of the things I ask is, well, what's your water temp and what's your oil temp? And if they don't know what their oil temp is, there's a good chance the oil temperature is running hot and that's pulling your water temperatures up. So things to consider when you're using oils in rotaries, um, they are being used to cool the engine. So you need a quality oil that can, you know, take the abuse, isn't going to break down. You don't want a lot of foaming going on. Most performance oils have anti-foam agents in there. Um, you know, modern oil standards have really gone up and gotten better over the years, whether it's a thin viscosity or a high viscosity. Um, you know, another area of the rotary engine is if you're still running your OEM metering pump, the little pump on the side of the block down there. I don't run any of those on my race cars. They've all been deleted um, for many reasons. But if you still have that metering pump, that metering pump is pulling the oil out of the pan and injecting it back into the motor for lubrication. So if you're not doing oil changes regularly, if you're running a thin oil, running it hot, burning it up, um, you know, that's gonna affect reliability and long-term wear and performance of that rotary engine because if it's not good, getting good metering pump or premix injection, um, then that's gonna tear up the internals of the motor. So I'm just saying high quality oils that are good for rotary engines, you've gotta be able to have something if you've got that metering pump that can still be put in there. Um, most modern oils are acceptable, but check with the, check with your friends, check with me, check with the internet. Don't be somebody who wants to pioneer a new oil unless you're willing to uh, you know, go through those trial and errors. Um, but be aware that oil's being used for many 
purposes in a rotary engine. It's not just lubrication. It's not just bearing protection. It's also internal lubrication via the, meter, uh, via the metering pump. Um, and it's also engine cooling via injection into the rotors. So that oil should be changed probably more than recommended and generally go with higher quality oils. I know everybody's got their own preferences and I'm okay with that. I've ran a lot of different stuff, like I said, um, for the past six, seven years, I've been running renewable lubricants and I've been running their 20 weight 50. It's a very unique oil, it's American made, it's non-petroleum based and check that out. Um, it's one of the only ones like it on the market. They're a pioneer, they're a leader. Um, I love the way it stays stable. Um, I also love their premix, but it's not a renewable lubricants commercial. I recommend you check it out. My cars are ethanol. Ethanol cars uh, have a tendency to dilute your oil a little bit and renewable lubricants because it's not petroleum based. Um, is is way better in that area it doesn't dilute it the same way you don't have the same breakdown so i've been really happy with it um, but whatever your engine oil choice is i mean that's really up to you make sure it's rotary engine compatible um, and be aware of the multifaceted duty that that oil has to do now back to viscosity um, you know you want stable oil pressure Rotary engines have a tendency to run the oil hot. They have a tendency to foam it up a little bit. So I think having that higher viscosity is a little bit better when it comes to fight all of those things the rotary engine does to create stable oil pressure, whether it be high RPM, um, high horsepower, high load, whatever the case might be, um, in all of the engine building, engine teardown, my own cars, customer cars, the cars running the thicker viscosity oils always look a little better inside. Now, I know this is a touchy subject, like I said at the beginning, so I'm very aware that people run different viscosities for different reasons, and I'm okay with that. I just kind of wanted to uh, give my opinion. I get asked regularly, um, and I thought it'd be a great thing to touch on. And I think it is interesting that, you know, over the years, people have tried, uh, you know, thin oils, like I said, to get maybe a little more horsepower with, with knowing that uh, that may cause more bearing wear. And then vice versa, in my case, you know, I want absolute reliability. I know I'm just torturing these engines. Um, drifting is a great test bed for any component. So I, I lean towards the side of reliability and protection and i may sacrifice uh you know a horsepower or two or put a little more load on that oil pump because i'm running higher viscosities but when i talk to my drag race friends they all laugh because they're running usually higher viscosities and in in some cases when i've talked to road racers like i said they go no i'm just not going to make that sacrifice i know i'm going to rebuild the engine i know i'm going to put new bearings in it so i'm going to run that thinner viscosity now the viscosity of his have changed so much over the years. And my understanding is, is that nowadays, like your, your five weight thirties, your, your 10 weight thirties are very stable. So, you know, when it comes to OEM cars recommendations, I think it's always good to do if it's just a stock street car, what the manufacturer says, but I thought it was a great topic. I think I got asked twice in this past week and, uh, I figured we'd do a quick video on it. So that's a wrap. If anybody's got questions, let me know. Um, you know, Mazda Tricks has uh, renewable lubricants, Itamitsu, um, you know, they've got a lot of quality premixes. Just hit us up if you need anything. We're always happy to talk that brap. Thanks for watching.